Hey, hey, how are you doing? Hi everyone. I'm Chris. I'm Bex. That was cruel in the last episode. I wanted to keep, like, have a conclusion at the end. Bex said keep them waiting. What? That's not how it went at all. <laughs> so, did we get it, Bex? We didn't get it. We were so upset about not getting it. The boat was initially priced at £42,500, which was far too much right from the get-go for us. That's not right. It was, was 42 and a half. No, it's 40. A hefty price of £42,950, is that right? A lot of haggling, we got it down to, what was it? £37,500. Not only the boat had some pitting that might need addressing, but also the sacrificial chine had had some damage. Um, now, as we sort of delved into our negotiations with the chapion in this boat, we discovered that he hadn't actually addressed any of these survey recommendations, hence why we sort of started to haggle on the price. The boat was valued at £35,000 on that past survey and three years on, no work really had been done to it <laughs> and yet the price, fair enough, taken into the account that, you know, boat prices do go up a little bit, but how it had sort of generated another £8,000, I'm not quite sure. As we stated, we sort of walked into this boat more for research purposes, ended up loving it. It was way, way over our budget. We took into account what the survey had recommended as well and the fact that this work hadn't been done and we went in with our offer of 30, well, we managed to get it down to 37,500. So with our fingers ready on the button to send our deposit over, we started deliberating over a few things. Firstly, actually, quite probably fortunately, there was a couple of things we needed to check that were on the contract, so that sort of halted us. And during that time, um, we decided to sort of go and get in touch with a few um, more knowledgeable, experienced people to get some form of an estimate over what these works that we knew it had to do would cost, um, and generally just some advice. So spoke both to uh, an ex-boat builder who's a really experienced, knowledgeable chap. Not a Not a And then secondly, a boat surveyor. And they both kind of came up with the same conclusions really regarding the boat. Um, firstly, that it was really quite overpriced. Um, and the fact that this work had been um, mentioned in a survey three years previously, not only was that to be taken into consideration, but the fact that this boat may well have deteriorated even further past that point in those three years. So once we started totting things up and we were ad you know, looking at other things that the, the boat needed additionally, um, it's just started look, looking like it was going to cost a huge amount extra on top of what was already a high price for the boat. The big bit for me was just a few people coming back saying it seems the boat's been unloved and that didn't sit too well with me. I thought I want my boat to have been loved for its life. The whole boat could end up costing us another £8,000 to get up to where we want it which would completely interfere with our main idea and adventure of navigating the whole canal system. So it looked like it needed replacement batteries which can come to about £500. It needed the anodes, are they about 500 quid? Um, At least, yeah. There was some pitting that could have possibly been addressed, which is sort of just, uh, I won't go into detail on that. All of these things are sort of totting up and you're comparing it to other boats you've seen on the market and it just, it started to feel like we would be getting ourselves into some financial difficulty if we were to progress with this boat. So, our eyes were bigger than our stomachs. <laughs> We've decided to knock this one on the head. Lesson to be learned, don't just fall in love with how a boat looks and think it's all gonna be canny, because it just, it isn't at all. We've heard some horror stories this week of people who have just gone out on a whim, bought a boat, haven't done their research, and within two weeks of owning the yeah. boat, they had £5,000 worth of work needing to be done on it for one reason or another. So don't, you have to sort of be led a bit by your heart, but mostly by yeah. your head, be sensible. This is our sort of warning and our advice to anyone out there who's currently looking to buy a boat. Really do your homework and make sure you know exactly what you're getting yourselves in for. Take your time and the right boat will find you. Yeah, we were sort of like pressured a little bit by the fact that we knew that other people were going to view this boat and that definitely sort of forged our 
our um, offers. Okay, so tons and tons of awesome little boat viewings coming up. We've got, I think we've got about six coming up. We've, we've reviewed about four the other day, so I think in the next vlog we're going to have like two and then another two. We're going to try and whip them out really quickly in the next few weeks. We're basically on the rebound. We are fully on the rebound now. Heartbroken so. from our last experience, so we're out there with a vengeance looking at absolutely everything we can get our mitts on. Even stolen ones. Yeah. Some pretty dodgy ones out there. <laughs> I think we may have found a stolen one. I think, yeah. We're anyway, boat detective. Yeah, we won't go into details on that. <laughs> Just yet. Yeah. I really like the idea of going to look at a tug style narrow boat. <laughs> We've looked at so many awesome ones. Let's broaden our horizons even more. And you know, the, the big nosed ones. Yeah. Like ticking everything off the list. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. Awesome guys. See you all later. Peace out. Bye bye.